Mr. Jobby? Hi, can you hear me? We can hear you. Hi, my name is Aman Jabi. I'm a resident of uh, Big Folk, Montana. Uh, I've had over 25 years of experience uh, in Silicon Valley. I've developed imaging and cameras and I've worked on optics and technologies that have been sold to companies doing facial recognition and 3D cameras. I have a deep expertise in this area. Unfortunately, I've been attending these meetings uh, for the HJ48 now for the last five or six months. And it still seems that people don't have a grasp on what actually facial recognition is, how it is can be used, and how it is going to be used. Uh, there's a common underlying theme that I heard again from the speakers. It's about solving crime. It's about safety and security for the public. And uh, obviously, you know, people were concerned about privacy. And whenever you hear about privacy with facial recognition, it's a red herring. Because in reality, when facial recognition is done in the digital world with artificial intelligence algorithms, you are guaranteed privacy. Because all the data for the face will be stored on blockchains. And it will be immutable. And it will be, uh, it won't be able to, be seen by most humans or almost no humans. It'll all be done by artificial intelligence algorithms. So if you go back in history, look at the last 20 to 30 years, new technologies have always been sold to the public as carrots. We've been given you know, subsidized phones, cheap computers over the last 20, 30 years, and it's always sold to us as carrots. They are sold for convenience, they're for our safety and security, and it's to catch criminals and the bad guys. And I think other than one person who gave some feedback a short while ago, pretty much nobody seems to understand how the sticks are coming. And the sticks are going to be worse than where China is today. So if people in this committee or beyond think that giving any access to anybody, law enforcement or otherwise, in the name of safety or security, you're doing good for the public or good for society, you are ushering in a digital technocracy that is about to come in, okay? And if people don't understand this, facial recognition will be used directly for a digital ID that is already being ushered in in many countries around the world, and it's coming to America. Once the digital ID comes and it will be linked directly to your face, it will also be linked to a new type of digital currency. It's going to be called central banking digital currency. It's going to have social credit scores and carbon credit scores. And it's going to have your vaccination status. There's going to be a new type of currency going to be ushered in. And this is going to be used to lock down society in every which way. Okay, so I'm sorry for my, you know, uh, strong words here. I have uh, made a video presentation. I've been talking about this in Northwest Montana. I've given this presentation on Northwest Liberty News. I have presented, uh, done live streaming to town hall meetings in Australia. I've been on Dan Happel. I have sent my presentation to the Attorney General. I've spoken to Lake County and Flathead County Commissioners here. I've spoken to multiple Montana state legislatures. I sent an email with a link of my video presentation to this committee a day or two ago. I would highly recommend everyone watch that. It's 35 minutes long. And educate yourselves on what facial recognition and the digital ID is going to do to society. I would highly recommend that. So uh, the other major point I want to make is that in almost all cases, facial recognition will be done by software and artificial intelligence algorithms, and it will be done on servers and by private corporations not residing in Montana. Okay, these computers will be owned by private corporations. The AI decision making will be done by algorithms by private corporations for the sake of isolating a digital identity that's going to be used for gathering, storing, and scoring on a blockchain. So banning facial recognition in Montana is meaningless. One needs to understand what facial recognition components there are. There are three major components of facial recognition. One is the sensors and cameras. 
The other is the software running in the cloud, which is artificial intelligence. And the third is storage. Most of the discussion that's happening in this committee and has been for the last six months, months is about the storage aspect, which is where it will be stored, how it will be accessed. There's no talk of sensors and cameras. That is the biggest problem. So banning facial recognition in Montana at any level means nothing. Okay, so just to conclude, I would like to say that if anybody in this committee or in this room has kids or grandkids, if you allow this to go through, which means not only facial recognition, storage and access, but the entire chain, as I explained, you will be directly contributing and directly responsible in the permanent enslavement of yourselves, your kids and your grandkids into perpetuity. So I would recommend that people watch my presentation. It's 35 minutes long and educate yourselves on the perils of what's coming. And it is being unveiled as we speak under our noses without us knowing it. And that concludes my comments. If anyone has questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Uh, thank you for following along with the committee, Mr. Javi, and your comments. They're appreciated. Is there any further comments from the public? Now is the time to raise your hand before we move on. 